Hey guys, so today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to draw a football player in a dynamic pose. And I'm gonna be using this picture of George Kittle that I recently drew uh, to show you this step-by-step -step process on how to get there. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is draw out the basic layout on the page, just make sure the composition fits right. And if you wanna get this drawing that I'm doing on like a t-shirt or phone case or a photo or a poster or some other merch, uh, check out the link in the description below. Initially, before I started this drawing, I first chose a reference image, which you can see here. And then after choosing a reference image that I thought might work, I did a couple of quick thumbnail sketches, which you can see. And basically the point of that is just to make sure that uh, this, this pose is gonna translate well into a drawing. I found that some poses look cool um, in a photo, but maybe when you draw it, it's not as cool. Now, as I'm doing the sketch, one of the most important things uh, when it comes to a dynamic pose is the hands. You know, you can really uh, show a lot of energy um, from someone's movement in their hands. If people's hands are very stiff and, and boring or they look, look very flat, um, it can really make a dynamic drawing uh, just not appear dynamic. Make it look, like I said, very stiff and flat. So I really wanted to make sure that this hand here that's kind of in the foreground here that's sort of popping off the page was really perfect. So I did a whole number of sketches, which you can see here, uh, of different hand poses, uh, just to make sure that I got the exact perfect pose that I wanted. And you know, it's very easy to get lazy, especially with hands and to just, I found personally just draw a hand that's, oh, that's close enough and then you, you draw it, you go through the motions, and then next thing you know, when you're finally done, you're like, you know, this hand doesn't look very good. It kind of, it's not very good at all. And so I just, in this, um, in this drawing, I really wanted to put an emphasis on making this hand perfect and really took the time to get the pose right and to do some thumbnail sketches to make sure the proportions and everything look good. I didn't just wing it. So that's something that can definitely improve uh, your your hands that you draw, don't get don't get lazy and complacent. Um, definitely put in the time, do thumbnail sketches to make sure uh, you've got a really good uh, hand, basically. Now, in addition to the hands, one of the other most important things to make a drawing look dynamic is the face. And you can see, here's a zoomed in reference of the face that I was using of Kittle here. And he's got this really intense stare, which I think really helps the pose. You know, his eyes are looking all the way to his right. And like I said, his stare just looks really intense. You can't really see his mouth because it's blocked by the, the face mask. But just his eyes alone and the way he's staring really makes for uh, a great pose. So as I'm drawing the initial sketch here, I'm really trying to make sure I get that, get that pose right. You know, don't be afraid to erase uh, if, you know, the eyes are too big, too small, too close, too far apart and really take the time to just make sure um, you've got your pose down perfect. Don't just be lazy. Don't be afraid to erase. And that'll really uh, do well in the long term to make your drawings much, much better. And after that, I continue to just keep filling in the details for all of the drawings here on my mock-up here. And just a few things of note to make a, a drawing like this uh, more dynamic. Definitely, you wanna have some perspective uh, especially that's most noticeable here on like his left shoulder pad, the shoulder pad right next to where the football is. You can kind of see how his other shoulder pad, it's much bigger and uh, the shoulder pad on his left, as it starts to get smaller and smaller, it's almost kind of tucked behind the rest of his torso. So that perspective there really makes things more dynamic and adds some depth in your drawing. Uh, another thing that I found is really helpful is you can see the towel that he's got um, tucked in behind his waistband, kind of behind him. And a lot of players in the NFL, they wear towels and they have these little towels to help dry their hand. And uh, so I always include them in my drawings. And as you can see, the, the towel that I drew is waving in the wind, almost like a flag. And there again, that really adds to making the drawing look more dynamic. And even though that's not in the reference image that I had, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is art. You're allowed to do whatever you want. You know, don't be a slave to the reference image and just 
do exactly what it says no matter what. You know, I strongly believe that, yeah, you start with the reference image, but whenever possible, improve it, make it better. Don't just be stuck with how the reference image looks. If you don't like the hands on the reference image, draw your own hands. If you want to tweak the pose a little bit, tweak the pose. And um, so that's definitely something to think about there. And then as you can see, like his legs, kind of the, the awkwardness of where his legs are, uh, I think really makes it more dynamic. He's not just standing there on his feet. He's almost falling as he's running. So definitely adds a lot to it there and you can see kind of the curve in his spine. So these are all things that can make your drawing more dynamic. Don't just draw them uh, right in front of you, head on, just standing there straight and perfect. Um, you know, if you can tweak the pose a little bit, make it look a, bit, a little bit reckless here, like he's about to fall, um, that definitely adds to, to making it way more dynamic and way more compelling. So next we get in the first phase of the inking stage and that's basically to just do a quick uh, rough outline of all of the lines. And then we're gonna erase away the drawing. So uh, these outlines, you wanna do them as thin as possible, um, just so that, you know, if you wanna tweak something in the future, it's not too hard to change it. And as long as you've done a real good job of your, uh, your sketching underneath drawing, then uh, this process should be real simple. Now from here on out, you could really take this in many different directions. You know, now I've got the, the outline under drawing uh, here in pen, then, you know, whatever style you prefer, however you feel like drawing, uh, you could really morph this drawing into uh, fit many different styles. Um, but I'm gonna basically show you the, the comic book style that I've been drawing uh, recently. And that is basically, uh, it's very thick outlines and combined with cell shading. So that's the comic book style that I'm into these days. So it's basically the style that I'll be showing how to do. But honestly, from this stage, you could do pretty much any style that you want. Now for this style, it's all about really thick outlines. So first thing I did was outline all the major areas with uh, this really thick marker that I have. And now the next thing I'm doing is coming in with a medium sized uh, marker. And basically I'm just going through the areas where I feel like a medium sized uh, outline is deserved. And basically for this uh, cell shading outline style that I'm going with, um, there's not gonna be any uh, hatching or cross hatching in the inking stage to, to delineate depth and things like that. So uh, line variation is really the, the number one way for me to um, create emphasis and create depth. So I'm gonna have the thickest lines anywhere where I want um, something to really, like I said, have depth. So his hand in the front is gonna have very thick lines around it to differentiate it from his body. Um, you know, the, the line between his face, his face mask and the rest of his body, that's gonna be a real thick line because, um, you know, that sort of 3D, that his helmet is, you know, in front of his, the rest of his body. And yeah, that's how I basically differentiate things and, and emphasize what's most important. And then of course, lastly, I'm gonna come in with a really thin uh, marker and do all the very thin, delicate parts. And this is a style that I really enjoy a lot. Um, I do, been really doing a lot of it lately. And I, there's just something about it I just really like. Um, it's just very clean style. Um, and, but it's kind of unique and I definitely enjoy it a lot. And then lastly, I'm gonna come in here with the, with the thinnest marker and just kind of do some touch up work. Maybe extend some of the shadows here, uh, add some of the details on the face and um, you know the the wrap that he uses on his shoulder kind of adds some of the the webbing on there and the texture of the fabric so this is just me kind of finishing up the finer details cleaning up some some rough lines and really just trying to bring the the inking all together and unify it and and you know, like I said, do some final tweaks if I need to make some lines a little bit thicker here and there. 
um, I'll just use the, the finish marker here to kind of make those lines just a smidge thicker um, to make everything perfect exactly how I want it for the final inking part. So here's the final inking drawing in all its glory. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. I think putting the, the time and effort into the hand and the pose and, and making it intentionally try to look dynamic uh, was definitely worth it. And next we'll get into adding colors. Now with the colors, I'm going with a cell shading style, which means that it's basically gonna be flat colors with no gradients. So in order to uh, accomplish this, I'm gonna first lay down a base layer of color on each area. And uh, first what I'm doing is putting the red down. And basically for each color, I've got three different shades. So for the red, I've got, you know, a lightish red, a medium red, and then a dark red. And I'm putting the lightest shade down first. Now, uh, what I'm using for these colors is alcohol-based markers. And they are extremely useful uh, tool, like markers. You know, they're great for coverage and laying down uh, big areas of color. What makes these special is that you go over and over the same spot and it will not mess up the paper and uh, you're able to blend colors and there's just uh, really a lot of things you can do compared to traditional water-based markers. And um, so they're, they're very useful. So the first thing I'm doing is putting down the lightest shade over all the areas that are gonna be red. And then I end up doing the same thing with all of the gold areas, you know, his helmet, his pants. And then uh, I end up putting the same thing down for the skin tone areas. And the reason that you're putting the lightest shade down first is because with these markers, you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. So I'm putting the, the lightest shade down first, just so I can lay out what areas are gonna be what colors. Uh, also, so I don't make mistake and so there's no confusion. I don't accidentally start coloring his skin red or accidentally start coloring, you know, his his pants red or something like that. You know, you want to make sure that uh, you're very careful uh, notating which colors go where. Um, but like I said, you, you know, you put color down and you can go darker, but you can't go lighter. So you always start with the lightest shade first. Now, next, I'm going to be adding the middle tone for each color. And this is going to be the primary color that's going to make up uh, the majority of this, the area where the color is. So, for instance, for the red, uh, this middle shade of red is really going to be uh, cover the most area on the paper. And basically what I'm doing for this shade is I'm coloring everything except for where the highlights would go. So the first, uh, the first shade that I put down, the lightest shade, covered everything and I'm gonna basically color over top of everything except for where the highlights are. And one of the reasons why I color the lightest shade in on everything and not just only on the highlights is I feel like it helps uh, the second shade have a more even coat um, so that you don't see streaks in the marker that it all kind of blends together and, and makes for even, uh, even color. So that's why I do that there. Uh, but the second shade, like I said, you basically color in everything else except for where the highlights were and you leave that blank. And that goes for, you know, the red shade and then as well as uh, the gold shade, basically doing the same thing, coloring in everything except for where the highlights are. And with the skin tone as well, um, you know, with the skin tone, I'm basically trying to shape the muscles and show where there's highlights and, and shadows. Um, so you can really see the depth of the muscles through the use of, of the shading. I think it has a good effect and really helps, helps the muscles and things like that look more 3D. Now the last thing I do is I get the darkest shade of each color and I use this to fill in the shadows. Now for the most part, you know, it's gonna be obvious where shadows are. Uh, one thing I would add is on the helmet and some other areas, uh, you know, where the the line between where the highlight and the middle tone meet, uh, a lot of times it does have a good effect to put uh, the darkest shade right in between that and kind of create that that uh, effect that comes from refracted light. 
So, but other than that, you know, you're just basically gonna put the darkest tone wherever shadows are. So with the jersey, that might be in wrinkles or, you know, the armpit area on his pants. It'd be around his buckle and, and where his legs come together. Um, and the skin tone, you know, just areas where there'd be shadow, um, you know, the shadow from his helmet, things like that. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, should be pretty simple to do that. But like I said, um, I think the three tones really just adds one more layer of depth makes it look a little bit more 3D, especially with this uh, cell shading effect. And I definitely uh, definitely like the way it looks there. So hopefully uh, this tutorial helped you be able to draw uh, a dynamic football player. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching this video about George Kittle. And uh, you know, if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of other videos drawing football players in a comic book style. And if you have any suggestions of like a player you'd like to see me draw, definitely leave a comment below and definitely subscribe. Uh, like I said, appreciate that. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.